Hi everybody, welcome back to a new episode of I Talk to Notebooks. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be starting a video on a project that I am starting. So um, it's going to be a journal cover made of fabric and it's a little bit ambitious. I'm not super great at sewing, but I've really wanted to get into quilting for a long time. And this seems like a good beginner project for me to get started with. That's gonna, I'm going to be motivated to do because it is a product that I actually want and have trouble finding anywhere. So to start off where I got this idea, I wanted to show you guys some journals that I have. Um, this one here um, and this one and this one they are all the same size and pretty much identical except for the covers and if you look inside you can see they have nice cream colored pages they have a spot for the date up here i don't know if that's showing up too well on camera they have thin gray lines very faded faint just the way i like it and i wasn't so sure if i wanted to use these journals as personal journals because they are so spiral bound and the covers are kind of flimsy and i just don't really feel super secure in a journal like this at the moment um, but they seem too pretty to use for work journals, and I really like them, and I envision using them as personal journals. So I was trying to figure out how I can make these work for me. By the way, these are French journals. Um, they come from Korea, actually. Um, well, I guess they're manufactured in Korea. They're designed in California. I'm not really sure. But the point is, I get these at TJ Maxx um, or Marshalls whenever I go in their notebook section. They usually will have one or two of these. So... Um, I've just sort of been picking them up one at a time as I see them because I love them so much and I wanted to get some use out of them. So I decided to try to make a quilted book cover for these guys. So I've been drawing on my plans. I've done measurements and re-measurements and reading about quilting and reading about book covers and then measuring and re-measuring. So I basically used um, a tape measure um, to measure all the way around the folded, the closed book because it's going to be a little longer when it's closed. And I did all my measurements based on that. And these are not for the actual size of the fabric pieces. These are for what will be visible. These are each gonna be about a little bit longer so that I have room to sew. If you know quilting, you understand this better than even I do as I'm explaining it. So you don't need to know, but this is basically, I wanted to do a checkered pattern with a little bit of a border, a frame around it. There's gonna be binding, of course. It's gonna be a hand tie quilt. Um, and this is gonna be the back. I got some batting, very thin batting. And then I'm gonna put little sleeves for the book to go into. I'm still trying to decide if I wanna sew the sleeves straight on or whether I need to use Velcro or snaps or something because it may be challenging to get the book to fit into the sleeves um, with as wide as I wanna make them. And I wanna make them wide because I wanna sew in some pockets so that these journals will have pockets on them. I also wanna sew on a ribbon bookmark for these as well. So instead of having to add pockets and ribbon bookmarks and all the things that I generally like to have in a journal, um, like an elastic clasp I'd like to sew on as well. Um, I'm going to just be building that directly into the journal cover. So I wanted to show you guys my haul from Joanne Fabrics and show you guys what I got and what I'm going to use it for. And then I'm going to get started making this. I'll make a couple videos of how I go about figuring this project out basically. Okay, so here is what I have for this product. So to start off, I have four different fabrics. Um, these two, the green and the purple, are gonna be used in the check pattern. And then this yellow is gonna be used for the frame. It's also gonna be the back of it and just, um, Oh, the parts that go that the journal slides into those pockets um, and then this is going to be for the binding the binding of Isaac no, not that. and then since it seems like I got a little bit too much I was hoping to use the excess of this and per perhaps this as well to make um, to make pockets to build them in since these journals don't have pockets of their own like a lot of journals do I thought I'd just make fabric ones that could be fun so I made measurements for those pieces as well. So that's the fabric, that's the fun part. Um, then all the other random stuff is gonna be batting. This was the nice thin batting that I found that was the least expensive and didn't have 8,000 yards of it. This is still way too much. And it's also microwave safe. So if you wanna make a cover for a Rodeo web notebook, this might be the way to go. No, 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 not that, rocket book. Rocket book, right, isn't that what it's called? I don't remember, the one you put in the microwave. This, I guess, is for like microwavable 
potato bags. I don't know, I'm not gonna microwave this, but it was inexpensive and it's about the right thickness, so it's good to go. I have um, oh, some pins. I have a few pins here, but I didn't have that many, so I got these just to be sure. I also have fabric scissors, which I do not currently own, and thankfully these were on sale, because fabric scissors can get pretty expensive. Um, these are like the cheapest one that there was, so. I don't know if this is gonna be like a permanent hobby or something I make a lot of these and I really like it or I try it once and I fail and I never wanna do it again or I try it once and it's great but I'm done with it forever. I'm just not sure, I don't do this very much. I've enjoyed quilting in the past but with very limited experience, very simple projects. This is a lot more ambitious and I don't really know what I'm doing. So I try to cheap out a bit but if things get, um, things go well, maybe I will buy better sewing scissors. I don't know. And then I also got, of course, some thread. So this is hand quilting thread. This is probably for the actual quilting part, but I'm gonna use it for the sewing, the piecing part. Guys, I don't know. But this is a nice blush pink color. I'm not planning on having the thread show in most parts of it, but there are probably gonna be some parts where the thread does show through. So this kind of matches the, um, the binding fabric that I got. And then along those lines, I also have a sewing needle course these longer ones I think are good for the tying and then these shorter ones should be good for uh, the actual sewing they're called sharps and that's what I read online that you use for this who knows and then this is called pearl cotton and I made the mistake of our cotton pearl maybe I made the mistake of getting this by accident when I meant to get floss for cross stitching so that was the worst but this is actually really good for tying quilts hand tying quilts which I'm gonna do for this one instead of actually quilting it um, I do have some very limited experience with hand tying quilts and this is pretty and it's small and the project is small so I thought this would be better than crochet yarn for this project. And then I got probably too many buttons. These are going to be decorations, um, hand tied quilts. You can actually integrate buttons pretty easily so I just got those to integrate and it looks like one of them is missing already. So I'll have to, oh wait, there it is. There's four. This is like probably more than I'll need. I'll save it and return it if I need to, maybe, once the project is a little more well-defined. But I've already had to redo some of my measurements, so I thought better to have too many than too few. And these were not expensive at all. All right, so that's what's there. And then a couple more things that I got is, um, this is uh, Sew on Velcro. So uh, because it's not a flexible, like the book covers that you get for school books and textbooks, like as a kid in high school, um, I realized that it's probably going to be a pretty snug fit the way that I'm designing it and I don't want to be struggling and ripping the fabric or bending the notebook covers to try to squeeze it in. Rather, I want to make the top of the pockets Velcro so that I can top load the book in and then close it off. This Velcro is pretty thick. I may have to cut it in half. I'm not exactly sure how this part's going to work. I may not have... I don't know. I thought it through pretty well, but this could, all of this stuff is subject to change as I understand this project more. It's how it is with duct tape wallets and I'm trying to use the same approach. Like everything is malleable with the right attitude. I also have, oh, this is the fun stuff. So I got a marking kit because I don't really have any pencils here that would be appropriate for marking fabric. And I like that this came with an eraser and a sharpener um, so that I can, you know, erase mistakes. Cause I think I'm probably gonna make a decent amount of mistakes with marking and cutting the fabric and I want to minimize that as much as possible so this should be cool. This was one of the more expensive items, it was like 10 bucks for this stuff which seems kind of overpriced but I don't really know how much it costs to produce it so whatever. It should be helpful. The white one I don't really need because I'm going to be using light colored fabric um, so I'm going to be using the blue one exclusively. And then also I got some elastic so I don't know if you can get like colored elastic. I looked all over and I couldn't find any. So this was the prettiest elastic I could find, which is lingerie elastic. I'm gonna read a little bit about how, what my options are for dyeing it. I'd like it to be pastel pink, ideally. I could color it with a Sharpie, but I'm gonna see if there's any simple ways to change the color or whether people have had success with Sharpies. Worst case, it'll stay white, which is fine, but I just think it'll look a little out of place. I like the little eyelets on this. Um, that's not, is that the right word? I think so. They're pretty, so that's why I got this one. It's because it's pretty. And then finally, this is the ribbon I'm going to use for the bookmark, the integrated bookmark. Oh, I don't think I explained what I was going to use the elastic for. This is going to be for the elastic closure. The book doesn't have that inherently, so I'm going to just add one to this cover and then that will function the same way. And then it also doesn't have a bookmark, so I thought this ribbon was really pretty, so I'm going to use this as the ribbon bookmark. 
So all in all, all of this equipment sent me back about like between $60 and $70 with coupons. So it's kind of expensive. Definitely if it was just the product that I wanted, then I would have not done this. This is like not cost effective, but I really wanted to get into quilting for a while. And this is a project I'm really excited about. So this is going to be a good foray into that to see if it's something that I have promise in. So I think it was worth that investment to find out if I like this and to really give it the best shot with like not missing things or trying to cobble things together from my, you know, leftovers or things I may or may not have, but just to have everything ready to go and just get started with it. Hey guys, um, today I wanted to just start cutting out some of these squares and I thought it would be fun to do it on camera and just show you guys a few of them. So let's get to it. I just wanted to do a check-in so the piecing is done on the front and I have cut out the back as well and I've got it pinned together with the batting in the middle to do the tying which is the next step um now the front came out a little small I think either due to bad ironing or poor measurement or something you can see this is not a perfect quilt by any means um but it didn't quite fit so I cut the back to the correct size and so you can see there's a little bit of, they don't quite line up. The front is smaller than the back. And I'm planning to use the binding to fudge that. And I think it should work pretty well. If it doesn't, I have plenty of extra fabric and I will just start over. So I'm gonna tie this and then we'll see what happens next. So here's this quilt all tied and you can see that there's a lot of batting coming out the end here. Um, but I actually trimmed that down and it matches up with this size. So I am going to have to use the binding to kind of fudge the edges. Now this is going to be the inside. So you can see the little tie knots here. I tied the buttons on when I did the tying. So I did a tie on each green square and, um, it feels really nice. Um, here's some elastic. This is going to be the book closure elastic here. Um, I was a white elastic. I used Rit, uh, petal pink powder dye and the fixative to, um, dye this pink instead of white and I think it worked out pretty well there are a few stains like you can see there and there that are a little bit discolored but for the most part I think it turned out really really well and then um, this is going to be the bookmark because um, the notebooks don't have a bookmark this one is really excessively long I'm going to trim it down once I put the book in to figure out how long it should be this is an approximation I may have to uh, fiddle with this a little bit um, I think it's the right length but it might be too loose um, and then here at the end, I have a charm. I thought this was really pretty, but the best part about it is that you can actually open it up and um, inside of it, there is a, oh, well there was, I guess it fell out. Um, you can put um, one of those absorbent beads and it has, um, you can put essential oil into it. So I had a lavender essential oil that I had in here. So there'd be like, I've always wanted to incorporate scent into my journals. So I think that having um, like a nice lavender smell would be really, 
really cool as part of this project. So I'll put the bead back in later, but the next step is the binding. So here's my binding strips all sewn together with the bias line. And I'm just gonna go around and pin it um, since I'm hand binding. I'm not using a sewing machine for anything because I don't have one. So I guess you're supposed to sew it onto the front and then hand bind it onto the back if you hand bind. So I'm hand everything. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And the next step will be to bind it. And then the only thing left will be to add the um, the flaps so that I can actually attach to the book and then some of the pockets that I wanted to sew in as well. So here is how the quilted and bound book cover looks so far. Here's the front. You can see there are a couple of mistake areas that aren't quite perfect. This is my third time doing the binding, so I'd had enough after that. And then if we flip it over, you can see that we also include, so far we have the bookmark sewn in. I'm gonna trim it still. And I also have the elastic sewn in here, perfect size. So far, that is what I have. The only thing I have left to do is add the flaps that are going to allow the book to actually be fitted into this cover. And I've sewn and hemmed all the pieces for that so far. We have the two main flap pieces that are gonna go over here and the book is gonna slide into. So we've got those, one for each side, of course. Then we have these little pink pieces that are gonna attach to the top. And this um, part is actually gonna be sewn open and there's gonna be a Velcro clasp. So that, that's going to attach that way and this way. Now these are gonna be folded in half. It'll make more sense when it's finished. And then I have the pocket pieces as well. Three purple and three green. So we've got some purple ones and some green ones. This isn't gonna be the exact layout. I'm just showing the approximation of where everything's gonna go. And then the book will just slide in here. These pockets will be available for use. I'm gonna make sure to sew so that this bin is outside, of course, so it's usable. Already um, tested to see if that's possible, and it is. And then I'll just have to cut this bookmark down and it will be set to go. So if you open it up, I covered up the page here that I already wrote on, but you can see that there is an inside front cover. So this is Velcro. Um, I originally had a different design, but it wasn't gonna work out. It didn't have enough forgiveness for my poor sewing skills. So this is a little bit more forgiving. Um, and you can just put in the journal like that, or you can take it out like this. Here's the original cover, which I really like. It's bee themed. It's all stained too. And so you can just do this. And there's little Velcros that hold it together and pockets here. I don't have anything in them yet, but they are there. Um, and then for the back, it is the exact same thing, like that. And the pockets and lots of little threads everywhere that I keep snipping and keep fraying and stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely really imperfect. You can see the stitching is all over the place, but I think it's really cute. I actually think it's really charming how imperfect it is. Um, so, uh, there's a little bit of batting in here. It was like the smallest, oh, this is coming off too. It was like the thinnest batting you could get is, um, was giving this its puffiness and its shape, I guess. And then finally, there's one more element to it, which is this bookmark, which is kind of sewed in the way you would if you were just adding it to a book, except it's sewn onto the cover. And it's this pretty, like, let me see if I can bring it up here and show you this flower ribbon. I found it so pretty at the store. And then attached to the bottom, I found this at Michael's. This is a, um, this is like a flower charm. It's spherical and you can actually open it up. And inside is a little uh, porous bead. I have a bunch of these and I can just put in a little bit. I'll show you. This is the um, essential oils, this one's peppermint. I don't really use this one, but I got it because it came in a two pack with the lavender. And you can just um, unscrew that and there's this little dropper. And then you can just drop the oils, oops, I'm not showing you, drop the oils in like that. And it smells like lavender, it's an essential oil and it just really soaks into that bead. And then, Oh, it smells so lavendery, which is one of my favorite scents. So I just put it straight into here again. 
Now sometimes if this knocks into something, it flies open because the closure is magnetic. You can see the magnet there and there. But I think this is really pretty. It's pastel and it matches the design. And I just think it really pulls the whole thing together. As you guys know, I've been trying to incorporate scent into my journals more so that I can always have like a calming, pleasant floral scent with me wherever I go. I really like that. So I wanted it to be part of my journaling experience. So yeah, that is about it when it comes to the whole case. Just took that paper out and then we can just put this back and it's good to go. Now I will be honest, typically when I go out with this journal, I will often take the cover off because if I'm sitting at like, let's say, particularly with COVID, if I go to a cafe to journal, it's always outdoor seating on these filthy tables have who knows what on them. It's really gross and I don't wanna be putting this fabric on because I don't think it'll be very easy to wash. Uh, the buttons do tend to pop off. I think, oh, I haven't lost one yet. I thought that I'd lost, oh, there. See, this flew open, so that's kind of annoying. Um, I wish it were a little more strong. But yeah, this is what I made. I made this a long time ago, but I've just now started to incorporate it with this most recent journal and I have other journals the same size and design that will fit this cover as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.